I'm Maggie from the blog backtothelandliving.com and in today's video I'm here with my husband Eric and we thought we'd give you guys a little bit of an update on our pigs. So earlier this year in the spring when we got our two pigs for meat we did a little video on how we built our shelter and how we had everything set up. So we thought we'd do an update with you and tell you what we've changed, what we've modified and how our pigs are doing now. So. Currently, we have changed our watering setup from the first video and our fencing setup. So, for our fencing, we originally just had them, and behind us here, you could see it was a solid fence, and that's how we had it set up. But since then, we've trained them to the electric fence, and we have them now outside in an electric fenced in area, but they can still get into their old shelter if they want to get out of the rain, which they do sometimes, but most of the time, they actually stay outside, they sleep outside, they really like it. And so what we originally did was to train them to the electric fence, Eric strung up inside of the shelter a little piece of electric fencing. And we just did it on one side. And when they touched it, they learned to back away from the fence. So that's taught them to respect the fence and to not go through it when they got shocked, but to back away from it. And so the first time they get shocked, they like ran to the other side and didn't even go near it. So they learned pretty quick. It took about one yeah. shot to learn, don't touch the fence. <laughs> So after about a week of having that fencer in their shelter, we opened it up and expanded it. So we ran the electric fencing out in, into a bit of a bigger square outside so they could get outside into the fresh grass and the shrubs and mostly burdocks really. Mm -hmm. And they could just forage. And actually the first night they didn't eat very much food at all because they were all filled up on the greenery and they loved it. We left that for about a month and now uh, last weekend we again expanded it. and. In about a week's time, they've completely tore up the next section. So I think um, in the future, we could even expand it more. So we'll see how much we expand it. But we thought Eric would go over. He has set up all the fencing. So it's solar and with a battery. And so we thought we'd go over how we have that all done for you guys. So our pig fence setup is pretty simple. It's an electric fence. So basically, we have three parts to it. We have the fence charger itself, which is a 12 volt DC uh, charger and it's uh, power is two joules and it's good for up to 200 acres, which is more than enough for having pigs. And basically all you have is a ground wire that goes to the ground and into a grounding rod, which I pounded into the ground. It's in about four to five feet. And then this is our electrical wire here that is hot. And so that just runs down to the insulator. And basically you have to make a complete loop around to uh, make it work. It's very simple with a DC charger. All you have is where you tie in your positive wire, which is the one that's hot and electric, and you have your negative wire tie in here, which is going to your ground. And then you have your cable, which has your two clamps that go up to the battery. And so it's a very simple setup. So this is where the ground wire ties in on the post. And here's just a piece of garden hose that we cut to go over the wire, because this wire has to go into the ground with a metal post and a clamp. And that way it completes your circuit. So basically the pig gets in contact with the hot wire, it goes through the pig's body and then into the ground and that's what shocks them. And so we have to have that and you have to have it protected so it won't short out. And then this is our hot wire here and it's wrapped around this post here and basically you just have to complete the circuit. So you have to have no breakage or anything in your wire and nothing uh, leaning up against it because it'll cause it to short out. And then we have our, our panel here which I just made this little stand in the shop. It took me probably 10 minutes. And it's just on a 45 degree angle, so it gets lots of sun. And that's all we really need. It's very, very basic. And I just built this box out of scrap wood, basically. Now the battery is uh, solar powered. And so basically, we just took an old RV battery and you hook your fence charger, your positive and negative, the clamps up to it, up here. And then you also hook your solar panel in, so your positive and negative. And that's what actually charges the battery. So this is the positive hookup and basically we have the clamp for our fencer itself and then we have the clamp for the uh, solar panel and then over here again we have the negative clamp for our uh, fencer charger and the negative clamp for our solar. So you have to have all these hooked up in the right order obviously for it to work properly. And we found it worked really good when it was super sunny like through July and August but now that it's getting to the end of August we're getting more cloudy days and so it hasn't been charging as well. I've had to take it inside and charge it on a battery charger. But the pigs at this point, they don't even really test the fence much anymore. They only run into it by accident now, and it's rare now. And so, to be honest with you, it like doesn't really need to be on at the moment. But it's still good to have just in case they did get running and wanted to go through it. And so next year I would try to find a better battery, something that keeps its charge longer, because I find this one is starting to dwindle a bit. So we got the, the 
solar panel from a local hardware store and I believe it's 110 watt. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the power of it, but it was just like a very cheap, I think it was like 45 bucks at um, Canadian Tire and that's more than enough to for this kind of setup. The fencer we got at the, our local farm store and it was at least $200 if not closer to three because fencers are expensive. And then like I said, we found the battery here on the property. So we got some money into the setup, but it's all we'll ever need for keeping pigs and eventually other animals down at our property we're building in the woods. So I say no. Oh, that worked. Yeah, yeah, okay. It works. So this is our updated um, water setup for our pigs. Originally we had this barrel over here in this corner with these two nipples attached to it. But I had a hard time finding something that hooked up good here because basically it was leaking around this area, all the water, and so the whole pig pen would basically flood with water and it was just a mess. And so I had to come up with something better and I, I saw one video where a guy hooked up some pipe onto a board similar to this and I thought that looked like a really good setup. And that way the, the water source is outside the pen so it's easy to work on because pigs are very uh, nosy animals and anytime I try to work in here with them they always are biting my tools or biting me or just a nuisance basically. And so what I've done here is I took a 2x6 board and what I did is I went to the plumbing section of local hardware store again and basically what I've got is a couple elbows that have um, places where you can screw in and then what I've done is I've I found what fit this thread, uh, it's, I believe it's a three quarter inch, and then I got these elbows and some uh, PEX pipe they call it. It's basically plastic, but you can you can bend it. So I got two lengths of that, and I got some um, clamps here, and then up here, what I got was another uh, 90 degree elbow, and this one had a thread on it. And what I found here is basically it's a large washer on both sides and a gasket and so therefore I could really tighten this down and I put some silicone on it for uh, extra uh, sealing and so I've had no water leak out of these and it's worked really good for us actually because uh, when it was really hot the pigs were drinking a lot of water and it was just such a better setup because if I had some issues with leakage I could just work on it with, uh, without the pigs uh, bothering me basically and so we've really liked it I think it's a great setup and the other good thing about this is when eventually we get down in the woods where Maggie and I are building our house and we're gonna have our, our animals down there eventually, I can basically just move this whole setup and I could put it anywhere I want because uh, eventually we'll have pasture pigs down there in the woods and we can basically move the water as we move the pigs. So that's what I like about our setup, everything, the fencer, the water, it's all mobile, uh, which is a good thing to have. So this is the barrel that we keep our water in and in order for our setup to work with the pipe and the nipples, we had to get it off the ground so it's basically gravity fed and so what I've done is I built a stand again out of uh, scrap wood that I had in my shop or it was lying around the property and basically it's made out of two by fours, deck boards, six by sixes, basically whatever you can find use and all you have to do is get your water source up above where it comes out to the pigs and it's worked great it has plenty of pressure for gravity fed you'd be surprised. changed since getting the pigs is their feed. So originally what we did with the feed was we just gave them pig mash twice a day morning and night and we wetted it down and we still get that to them in the morning and night but we've added some apples and some fresh food to it and some scraps and things like that. I don't have any more. No, it's in the trough. And so we found that when they were little they didn't actually find any interest in the other foods. They just wanted the mash but now they're destroying my bucket so I'm going to put it out. But now they're more interested in the apples and the other things that are pretty sweet. We found they don't like carrots and vegetables so much, but they really love apples and squash and watermelon, things like that. So we actually have some really nice neighbors who have brought us some apple drops. And so we've been feeding those with their mash and we find they always prefer the apples. 
And so now they're getting bigger, we're giving them more of that. And come October, when there's pumpkins and old jack-o'-lanterns, we'll be feeding them more of the pumpkins. And so we're hoping that will give the pigs a nice flavor. And so that's one of the things we've changed about the pigs since they've gotten bigger. So those are all of our updates we thought we'd give you of our pig. So if you are interested in seeing our original video, I'll link to that in the description so you can learn about the, how we get everything set up originally. And we'll also be doing a video on when they get a bit older. I think we'll probably be doing a video on our processing, potentially. Yeah. We'll see. And it'll be our first year processing pigs ourselves, but we decided we were doing this to have homegrown meat and to save money and sending it to a butcher is expensive. So we have a friend that is in our church and he's a wise farmer who is going to show us how to butcher them. I went last year and learned. So this year he's going to let us go up again, watch how he butchers them and we're going to try it ourselves. So we'll be sharing all that stuff with you. So if you want to see more of that or more homesteading videos, um, we'd love to have you subscribe and follow us along. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!